think especially in social media, because I'm so involved in it, one of the things you realize is people, you know, we talked about relatability, right? Yes. That people can relate to you. But also with social media, it's like, oh, I can just DM Mufti right now. I can DM Saf. It just becomes, there's no barrier anymore. Before it yeah. used to be like, if there was a celebrity, they'd be not reachable. So you'd be like, okay, they're away. But now it seems like, oh, I could do this. And yes, you can. And inshallah, if you put the time in and you, you know, if you want to become a mufti, for example, you can do that. But you don't see the background of how much work and hours and days and sacrifices you've made to be able to come to this point. So how I deal with that is uh, before I used to feel very, very hurt that I was unable to respond to everyone. But now I've, I've made peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that I feel I do la yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wusaha. Allah does not uh, burden you with more than you can cope with. Uh, I feel I I can do this. I'm going to do this. I can respond to ten messages. I'll respond to ten. The eleventh one drop, and it's one of those things. If we can give priorities to some, like it's a follow up thing or something you've been involved in, it's a different scenario. But you have to understand as a human, you are not accountable for every single message that came to you to respond it. It's yes. humanly impossible. It would need a lifetime. Yeah. So I've got 200 responsibilities in the day, for example. One of them is to respond uh, to messages, for example. Which platform you're going to have to choose and you're going to have to choose what to do and how much. And so you leave it. Uh, Maybe it has something good for the AI. There is a yeah, Mufti Meng AI. It. Somebody's actually oh, put it up, yeah. yeah sure. And I don't know how effective it is or how accurate it is, but I don't know. I don't know if I could actually uh, say that I support it because yeah, it could be very dangerous. You know, when we talk about the criticism and the kind of becoming more well known, and often the discussions I have with people who criticize and, and a, a whole range of people is. Well, what's the alternative? And I say this as a parent now, when I look at my children, who would I rather they were following? Because you you can't remove something without creating a void. And then they're complaining at the same time. Well, it's easy to go down, you know, a rabbit hole when you start going onto social media. And if there's reminders that are coming up, etc., or we don't have events where Muslims can come and attend, get some benefit and also socialize, would you want that completely removed? What's the alternative? I think different people are on different levels. So a person who's on a higher level of piety will never understand why you have a massive event, for example, on a yeah. night like the 27th night. But the <coughs> fact that it's fully sold out and there's yeah. so many people and most of them are young who come in, it shows that if these people were not there, they not all of them, but if a yeah. lot of these people were not there, they may not have used that night in any form of productivity whatsoever. So are we going to just stop everything simply because the pious people are telling us, you know what, uh, why are you doing this? Uh, and they are not experts in the field of dawah. No. This is one thing that I, whenever you hear pious people say, oh, this was bad and that happened and this happened. And I always tell myself, these guys are not experts, but we are the experts. We know what's happened. We, we, we make sure that we will tie all loose ends possible and we learn from experience and we develop over time, but we will make available whatever we can on all levels and categories. And that's why earlier I said that the scholars who are a little bit harder, they're also needed. Yeah. The ones whom you feel a gap from, they're also needed. And then you have the cool guys, you know. <laughs> uh, so right. the same applies in, in, in the field, that all these are dependent on the, the level of the individual. And we should never forget that everyone is on a different level. I love and care for the one on the lowest level as much as I would the one on the highest level. I've seen that from my own experience, if I can just say, working in the corporate sector, you see running Muslim networks. You know, sometimes with the practicing, as, as a practicing person, we have echo chambers. But when you're dealing with the people, the type of issues they'd have, like is so far removed from the discussions we'd have in our religious circles, that you don't know the heart of people. and. Even just a little reminder, they hold on to that. The only time they even go to pray perhaps is on Eid. And, you know, sometimes it feels like maybe we're pushing these people away, Mufti. So I, I really do understand your approach. The world out there is such that if you were to not pay attention to them, they would probably uh, turn away completely. So any form of uh, attention that you pay to them and 
you offer them uh, some form of a platform that they feel comfortable within, a non-judgmental. Yeah. Uh, there's a difference between giving advice and judging. That's a topic on its own. Yeah. But a non-judgmental, welcome them. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. Like I said earlier, I've specialized in uh, reaching out to non-practicing, non-Muslim as well, uh, the weak, those who are struggling to practice and, and so on. The minute you're practicing, move on. You can hold yourself to the highest standard, but doesn't mean you have to apply that to others, right? Exactly. Meaning you must be understanding of the fact that everyone is different. They go yeah. through different challenges. They've been through different upbringings. They've faced things. If you hear a quarter of what they've faced, you probably will drown in, 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 your, in your mind, you know. You know, when you hear of the term walking in somebody else's shoes, like you don't know the challenges. We've, a lot of us have been blessed, you know, with uh, maybe coming from practicing homes. So then we've already had that. And not everybody has that advantage. So totally. Absolutely. Absolutely.